In the previous videos, we've looked at our mathematical models in simply words, but let's get a little more specific and use some of the statistical notation we'll need in order to use these models to make inferences about populations. Now this will get us into the topic known as the general linear model, which is a very huge class of linear models that we can use to make inferences about populations when we think that model effects simply add together, like we saw when we added that baseline to an effect offset. Now the general linear model will have two separate classes of models we'll discuss. The first are known as regression models, and the second are known as mean structure models, or analysis of variance models. I'll clarify that language as we go on. But regression models were the first type of model we saw, the situation where we have a continuous predictor on the x-axis, and we're predicting some continuous variable on the y. We'll be specific in these models calling the y an outcome variable, and the x-axis a predictor. Now the other type of model is a mean structure model, like we saw when we had the different groupings. Now the technique we'll use to analyze these is known as an ANOVA, an analysis of variance, so often we call these ANOVA models, but they're really models in which we're interested in modeling the structure of the different means. Now again, in this case, we'll call the Y variable the outcome variable, but in this case, we'll call the X variable a factor. This is the factor of airline. And the different airlines we measured are the levels of that factor. So Delta, Southwest, and Virgin are each levels of the factor of airline. So in regression models, the X variable is interval or ratio scaled. And in mean structure models, the X variable is nominal or ordinal. That is, in a regression model, we're predicting something continuous on the basis of something else continuous. And in a mean structure model, we're predicting something continuous on the basis of a grouping. Now we're going to start with mean structure models, and then we'll circle back to regression models. Both of these models are under the general linear model class, and it turns out we'll use the same inferential techniques to actually test these models. And remember, we're describing the world in terms of this mathematical structure to give us a way to make an inference from a sample to a population. So the inferential technique will come secondary to the actual technique we use to model the actual means. Now as we think about our inference, we should think about the fact that there is a population model and a sample model. So we'll start this discussion by looking at how we would describe individuals in the population, and then we'll move back to the sample and talk about how we can use the sample model to make a prediction about that population. Now let's use the example we've been working with so far, but let's imagine that those 100 people that I measured were actually the entire population we were concerned with. So what we'll do is convert our word-based model into the actual statistical model using the correct notation. But again, let's imagine we're predicting these individuals' cost on the basis of the different airlines they were on. Now notice, even in the population, there is still individual air. That is, even in the population, if we represent individuals in these different airlines, there's still going to be differences between the average of a group and the different individuals in that group. Simply because we're dealing with a population doesn't mean we have all the variables that actually count in accounting for flight cost. That is, we still have other variables, such as what time of day they purchased their flight, whether they're flying near or far, or even just unlucky variables, like somebody had to purchase the flight at the last minute. So here was the model we had in words. Our price of flight was equal to 300, the overall average, plus some offset, plus individual error. So we're going to take each of these components and represent them with the actual symbols of the mathematical model in the general linear model form. So in this case, this will be our one factor linear model. And it's one factor because we're only using one thing to make a prediction about the cost of flight. We're using what airline they were on. And it's a factor and not a predictor because the groupings are actual different groups. They're not something continuous like number of minutes on the flight. So let's start with what we're trying to predict. The notation for an individual score is known as the yij. Now this is simply what we saw before, the individual score for each person. But we'll be specific with this notation. But don't get lost in the notation. This is simply bookkeeping. This is a way of keeping track of what individual we're talking about. So the way this reads is the score on y for the ith individual in the jth group. Again, this is just bookkeeping. This is a way of keeping track of which individual. Let's go back to our plot. The yij here is referring to the different individuals. And we can put a number in place of the i or in place of the j to represent particular individuals or groups of individuals. 
it's again a neat notational trick. So for instance, the yi1 is simply all the individuals in the delta group. That is, 1 represents delta, and j is the grouping variable, so the yi1s is simply all the people in the delta group. We can also put a number in for i. That would identify a particular individual in the delta group. So y101 would identify perhaps this person, a score of 340. Maybe this is Tom. So Tom in our data set has a value of 340, and we can, in the bookkeeping of where Tom is, refer to him as y101. Again, this is simply a way of keeping track of where individuals are and what groups they're a member of. All right, so we have the individual score, but we're trying to predict this on the basis of, remember, an overall average plus an offset plus some individual error. So let's look at the overall average. In this case, we'll call this the grand mean, or the population mu. Again, we're working with a population here, so mu represents the overall average of every individual. Notice that mu has no subscripts in this model. There's only one population mean, a mean is not represented for each individual group or each individual person, so there's no i and no j subscripts. It's just the overall grand mean. So there's our grand mean. We now have to represent the treatment offsets. Remember that we only have three of these. There's an offset for the delta group, an offset for the southwest group, and an offset for the virgin group. Individuals don't have offsets, groups do. So this will be a taw with one subscript, a j. And that's the treatment effect for the group J. Remember, these refer to those whole groups. So if I go back to our diagram, the toss sub J's here is the toss sub 1 for delta, $11.80. The toss sub 2, $3.47 negative, so below the grand mean. And the toss sub 3, $8.33 below the grand mean for virgin. So these taws are the offsets we saw before. They simply have a specific notation. And you can think of taw here as simply a treatment, the treatment offset for the different groups.